festive road was quiet. There was nobody about at all. Number 52 is Mr. Ben's house, and even there, there was no sign of life. Inside number 52, Mr. Ben was sitting down, thinking. I like my little room, he thought, but it seems rather small today. I'll go for a walk. Perhaps I may even visit the costume shop and have another adventure. Parked near Mr. Ben's house was a small car with a large, sad-looking dog in it. In a window was a bird in a small cage. And nearby, two boys had a rabbit in a small hutch. Mr. Ben walked into the lane with the costume shop, glad that at least he could get out of his little room. He went into the shop. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, sir, he said. Which outfit would you like to try today? Could you suggest something? asked Mr. Ben. The shopkeeper took a box. Inside was a blue uniform with a peaked cap. Try this, sir, he said. I feel this is the one for you today. Mr. Ben thanked the shopkeeper and looked to the door of the changing room. Once in the room, he changed into the uniform. What can it be, he thought, as he looked at himself in the mirror. Well, I expect I'll find out soon. And he walked through the other door. First, he thought he was in a jungle. Then he noticed a lot of cages, cages with animals in them. A zoo, said Mr. Ben. The trees are part of a zoo. Then I must be a zookeeper. The zoo was full of animals, rather sad animals, especially the crocodile with hardly any water to play in. After passing several cages, Mr. Ben came to a door with a picture of a parrot on it. The parrot house, Mr. Ben said, and went inside. Hello, a voice said. Are you the new keeper? Mr. Ben looked around, but he couldn't see anybody. Over here, said the voice. Mr. Ben looked again and found that the voice was coming from a large parrot. How do you like it here? asked the parrot. I like it, said Mr. Ben, but the animals, they don't seem to like it. Why is that? Let me out, said the parrot, and I'll tell you. Mr. Ben did as he was asked. <coughs> the parrot came out and flapped its wings. Oh, that's better, he said. Now let's go outside. Once outside, the parrot explained to Mr. Ben about the animals. You know, said the parrot, the animals like being here. They get good meals, and they enjoy people looking at them and saying how beautiful they are. But the cages are just too...
too small. Mr. Ben sat and thought. Suddenly, he had an idea. He explained it carefully to the parrot. And the parrot thought it was a good plan and flew off at once to tell the other animals. Meanwhile, Mr. Ben was carrying out his part of the plan. One at a time, he let the animals out of their cages. Last of all was the lion. <laughs> Mr. Ben had told the animals to go into the trees and then, as planned, they all hid. Once the animals were hiding, Mr. Ben ran out of the zoo into the town. As he ran, he shouted, Look out! All the animals have escaped from the zoo! Look out! All the animals have escaped from the zoo! In the town, the people crowded into the square. <gasps> what shall we do? Where shall we hide? They called. Mr. Ben spoke. As the animals have escaped from the zoo, that must be the safest place to hide, he said. The animals will never look for you there. Immediately the crowd shouted, To the zoo! To the zoo! And they rushed there as fast as they could. Inside the zoo, the people crowded around and waited in silence. The animals started to reappear. The lion. The tiger. The elephant. And all the animals. Mr. Ben said, the animals are coming back. Quickly, get into the cages. animals came back and walked around. It was just like a normal zoo, except the people were in the cages while the animals were outside. Don't worry, said Mr. Ben to the people. The animals don't mean you any harm. They only wanted to show you that the cages are too small. We can see that now, said the crowd. Let us out and we'll make larger ones. The plan had worked. The animals went back to the trees and hid so that the people were not afraid to leave the cages. They thanked Mr. Ben and agreed to start on the new cages at once. The animals were quite happy to go back to their old cages while the new ones were being built. Once the last of them was in, Mr. Ben watched the men start to build the new cages. Soon it would be a zoo full of happy animals.
Mr. Ben looked for the parrot. Suddenly, a man appeared. Try the parrot house, sir, he suggested. And Mr. Ben went inside. There he was, back in the changing room of the shop. Mr. Ben gave the blue uniform back to the shopkeeper. I didn't find the parrot, he smiled. But he left this for you, sir, said the shopkeeper. And he gave Mr. Ben a brightly coloured feather. Mr. Ben was delighted and said goodbye. In Festive Road, everything seemed to be the same, except that the boys had made a larger hutch for their rabbit. The birdcage was larger as well. And the dog had been let out of the car. Mr. Ben stopped at his gate and looked at the parrot's feather. I'll never forget that zoo, he said, especially while I have this to remind me. Thank you.